know, love, and serve God. The three reasons why we were created are to know, love, and serve God. How to know God? John chapter 17, verse 3, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. In the divine plan, every creature must acknowledge God as their creator. God made his creation as an expression of his love, so that love would come back to him for his glory. And for this reason, creation is an image of the Holy Trinity. The Trinitarian expression of God's works are found in all creatures. The Son is like the Trinity. Let's make a comparison that even being so far from God helps us to understand a, a little about the great mystery of the Trinitarian unity. Say that God the Father is the fire, God the Son is the light, and God the Holy Spirit is heat. Wherever there is a fire, there is light. Wherever there is light, there is heat. So the three are always together. God is one, yet three persons. There are three kingdoms in nature, animal, vegetable, and mineral. Time is divided into three, past, present, and future. States of uh, matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Measurements of space, length, width, and depth. Primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Parts of an atom, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Types of radiation, sun rays, alpha, beta, gamma. The soil nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Living cells in the blood, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The human family, father, mother, and children. The powers of the soul, memory, will, and understanding. Human expression, thoughts, words, and actions. There are many more examples, of course. Everyone is like a signature of the Creator. As might be expected, these images of the Creator are a small part of the knowledge of God that we should have. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 7, verse 8, For the one who seeks, finds. What really happens is that the only way of seeking God is through his own word. Since the Holy Scriptures are the spirit of the word, the eternal word revealed to God's people. John chapter 5 verse 39, you search the Scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that testify of me. The Scriptures send us to Jesus because the Spirit of the Word of God was incarnate in the womb of the Virgin Mary and became man. John chapter 1 verse 14 And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Most humans know something about God. So when we are children, we start asking our parents who created the world and everything in it. So the faith of the parents plays a very important role in the knowledge of God. True knowledge of God begins in the knowledge of ourselves, because we are created in the image and likeness of God. The more we understand about our smallness and lowliness, the more we receive more wisdom about the greatness of God. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, God said, Let us make man in our image and likeness. God created us to be his temples, temples of his Holy Spirit, his presence. And Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 17 verse 21, Nor will people say, Here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. Paul confirms that God lives within us in his letter, Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Do you know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells within you? To get to know God, we must first know Jesus. Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. My Father has given me all things. 
No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal it. Jesus reveals the glory of the Father when we know him first. You cannot know Jesus unless you deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. Mark chapter 8 verse 34, the place of the encounter with Jesus to really know him is Calvary, because there he worked the greatest miracle for all mankind, our salvation, the victory over death, sin, and Satan. There he gives us his love to forgive us our sins, paying for our sins by his death on the cross. Jesus, in his omnipotence and omnipresence, wanted to transmit this infinite love through the priesthood so that we can have that real encounter with Jesus in all the sacraments of the Church. In baptism, we enter into his body and become children of God. In confession, we receive forgiveness of our sins, and in the Holy Eucharist, we eat his body and drink his blood, which is the prerequisite to have eternal life. John chapter 6, verse 53, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and you drink his blood, you have no life in you. John chapter 6, verse 54, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. He who rejects Jesus, or who does not know him, will never know God. How to love God? Luke chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus, answering a doctor of the law who wanted to know what to do to inherit eternal life, Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Returning to our subject, God's plan for us is that we know, love, and serve Him. We cannot love someone we do not know. Just as we cannot love God without knowing Him, God offers us ways to know Him, as we do in prayer, and especially the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, the real presence of God. Emmanuel, God with us, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. To love God with all our heart, it involves allocating our hearts fully to Him, to our neighbor, too, because the more we use it to love other works of creation, the further we will be from God. The heart is the temple of God in us. When we turn away from God, we begin to create idols that come to fill the temple of God. Sin is the main God who enthrones itself in our hearts. It comes in different forms. Lust, anger, hatred, falsehood, envy, gluttony, sloth. A vice or addiction displaces God immediately and suffocates the temple of God. It darkens it and it will cast out God. The mind deals with many things in life and does not give time to God. Jesus asked the apostles to even spend an hour in prayer, Matthew chapter 26, verse 40. God requires tithing from us. It means a tenth of our lives for Him. The day has 24 hours. We should at least spend two and a half hours in the presence of the Lord in prayer. The soul was created to love God, but it becomes easily passionate with created things and ends up loving them more than his Creator. Our whole being should be available to love God. All our strength and our primary goal must be to love God. John chapter 14 verse 21, Jesus says, Whoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. And one who sins ends up being a son of the devil, as St. John says in his first letter, chapter 3, verse 8. He who commits sin is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. 
The Son of God appeared to destroy the works of the devil. We cannot love God if we love sin. In this we are tested in love. But we cannot love God without loving our neighbor either. God calls us to love our neighbor in earth as we love ourselves. Being images of Christ, we must therefore give our lives for our brothers, not crucifying ourselves physically, but living for God and for our brothers, as living sacrifices of prayer, praise, thanksgiving, worship, intercession, reparation, deliverance, and healing. How to serve God. Following the sequence of our subject, God's plan is that we know Him, then that we know the conditions to love Him, being out of sin and loving our neighbor. So now we are in a condition to serve Him. How can we serve a God who has everything? To serve God is to obey His commandments with joy. Psalm 100 verse 2. The first creation that God made were the angels. Angels serve God working in the labors of creation and being his messengers. At the same time, in their omnipresence, they worship God constantly and continually say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Heaven and earth are filled with his glory. Hosanna in the highest. But a third of them rebelled against God. They would not obey him. They did not serve him, they did not worship, and therefore were thrown from heaven and became demons. The second creation of God was man. God created Adam and Eve. He created them immortal and gave them power over all creation. He only asked them obedience. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 to 17. He warned them that if they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they would die. And so, man disobeyed and we all inherit original sin that leads to the disobedience of death in all sins. God came to establish the kingdom of heaven in our hearts. This kingdom is the kingdom of his divine will. In order for the kingdom of heaven to be established, in our hearts, we must fulfill all the wishes of God. His main desire or will is that we all be holy as He is holy, to be perfect as He is perfect, to be merciful as He is merciful. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 26 and Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. We can only serve God well if we are saints. Many try to condition their relationship with God, creating a God in their own way. In this relationship, they do good works, but if they are in sin, their works are tainted with self-love, therefore they have already received their reward and have no value to be offered to God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 2. So, whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. To serve God is to serve Him because He is God. It is not to expect any reward here on earth. It is to treasure for eternal life. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors which they served beyond the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We will never serve God if we don't do His holy will. Conclusion After knowing and loving God, we are humbly in a position to serve Him. In this way, we hope to fulfill the purpose of God's plan and at least we will be well on the way of salvation. If you like this video, please give us a like, please share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and leave your comments. God bless you.